Okay guys, next topic we're gonna be talking about is the third ball drop. I would say that this is probably like the meatiest topic of pickleball, um, but recognize that you have to understand the mindset on the serving side versus the mindset on the returning side. Serving side, you're at a huge advantage. Why? Because you can score, but you're actually at a huge disadvantage because the returner is already up and established and now you're playing defense as a server because you have to recognize when to drive and drop and then off of that, how to gain real estate. Uh, on the returning side, you're at, you're at a huge advantage. Why? Because you can get up and get established. Uh, and I would say that at lower levels, the returning side probably wins a higher percentage of points than the serving side. Why? Because it takes a select skill set to understand that when you're serving, you're on defense and you have to take your, take your time as you're on defense and as you're gaining real estate. Um, so. Let's, let's talk about technique on the drop. Technique on the drop is very similar to technique on the dink. Um, think about this. I like to roll my forehand dink. I like to uh, slice my backhand dink. When I'm at the baseline, guess what I do? Roll my forehand drop and slice my backhand drop. Kind of goes hand in hand. So think about when you dial in to your dinks, you use the same technique or use the same spin back at the baseline uh, based off of time as well. Um, so drop would be your lower extremities are nice and quiet. I'm letting the ball come to me. Um, uh, you know, if there's a bowl on top of my head, I'm keeping that bowl there. So same sort of preparation with my lower extremities and my upper extremities. Um, but I'm, I'm letting the ball drop and come up. Uh, so I'm, I'm making contact at the apex. I'm giving myself plenty of time. With time, I have time to get organized. I'm seeing the ball much bigger. Plain and simple, if you're gonna be efficient, if you're gonna be consistent on that drop, think about giving yourself enough space or giving yourself enough time off the baseline, okay? So timing is huge, having spacing is huge, and then, and then also too, uh, if you're at a position, let's say like the returner, uh, you know, hit a super deep return, pushed you out of position, you're gonna now use more lift on that drop. So think about using more lift when you're out of position on your drop, and then maybe finding the right happy medium of enough lift with some added push when you're inside the court. Plain and simple, out of position, more height, more lift, in position, in the court, halfway in the court, think about uh, finding the right happy medium of enough lift with a little added push. Plain and simple, if you're inside the court, you don't have to use as much net clearance. You can kind of flirt with the net a little bit on that, uh, on that drop. So um, after you've hit the drop, think about, think about cues or think about what's the main tell that allows you to really gain real estate and get moving and be efficient in that transition zone so you can get up and get established. Um, first thing to, to, to me that comes to mind is uh, looking to see where your opponent makes contact with their fourth ball. If I can drop and I see my opponent in this red zone and they're, and they're taking a half volley, there's a big old imaginary sign behind them that says, Tyson, please come in. They are not gonna hurt you from their red zone. Now, higher levels, if I drop and they're able to take it out of the air in, that, in, in their yellow zone, I would say higher levels, uh, most players have a pretty fine-tuned roll volley where it's tough to gain real estate if you've dropped a ball in their yellow zone. Um, so maybe in that scenario, maybe, maybe you're not coming in when you've dropped it in their yellow zone. Maybe you're being more selective about when you should come in or more selective uh, when you should come in if they're making contact in that red zone. If you're, uh, if you're getting comfortable with looking to see where your opponent makes contact on their fourth ball and you're looking to gain real estate a little quicker or maybe you're looking to uh, bake off your partner's shake or, or poach off your partner's drop. Plain and simple, if you want to gain more real estate, if you want to disconnect a little sooner, you're going to have to start gauging ball trajectory and that way you can, you can uh, gain distance much quicker. Uh, you can look at ball shape and then start making adjustments versus looking to see how pretty the drop is and waiting to see where your opponent makes contact. Higher levels look at ball trajectory, lower levels look to see where your opponent makes contact. Now, after you've hit the drop, when you make that transition, think about breaking down, being your most athletic self, but anytime you hit your fifth and your seventh or, or anytime that your opponent's making contact with their fourth and their sixth and their eighth, you have to break down and look to address and assess and see what your opponent does with that ball. Um, something I like in the transition zone is, yes, you can block if they're, uh, if they're finding your red zone or finding your yellow zone, but 
let's, let's give you license to start swinging if the ball's up a little higher. That way you can send a message and you can force your opponents to maybe second guess their fourth and their sixth and their eighth. Uh, think about this. If you want to walk through your fifth or walk through your seventh and you're not setting your feet or you're not finding your shock absorbers, it, it would be equivalent to hitting a putt in golf as you're walking. Plain and simple, it's very difficult to, uh, to have any sort, of, any sort of consistency or to have any sort of precision with your soft game if your feet are still moving. Keep in mind that all of your power and, uh, all, of your power and all of your control comes from the ground up. Okay guys, uh, so first drill here. Um, we're gonna be underhand throwing a ball um, into the kitchen. We're gonna be starting at the baseline. Uh, we're acting like uh, we're hitting a third ball drop. The main focus is um, getting our weight going forward, making sure that we feel our legs, uh, making sure that our lower extremities are being engaged and going through the ball, making sure that our upper extremities are nice and quiet. And then a uh, big focus is after we release the ball, I want us to pause our hand or I want us to release and then keep our hand positioning still. Both Janie and I are gonna be tossing balls underhand. Uh, we're gonna toss 10 balls with our forehand and then 10 balls with our backhand, okay? So nice and easy, tossing back and forth. Go ahead, go ahead. Tossing back and forth. You can toss cross court. Uh, you can toss uh, up the line. Main focus is, is pausing that hand, getting our weight going forward, making sure that all of our power and all of our control comes from the ground up. Look how we're keeping our head nice and still. Beautiful. Um, I would say another tendency that I see kind of in this like specific area here is that I see a lot of people doing too much with their take back. So focus on as we take it back, keep it inside a peripheral or keep it by the hip, by the hip and then out by the hip and then out, okay? So now next exercise, same drill, next exercise, we're just gonna be tossing with our backhand, okay? So balls in my right hand, um, balls in my right hand, on my forehand drop, uh, as, I was, as I was tossing, I was stepping with my left, now on my backhand toss or backhand drop, I'm gonna be stepping with my right, okay? So low to high, Pausing that arm. Okay, pausing. Making sure that there's no, uh, no added variables taking place with my lower or my upper extremities. Okay, perfect. We just demoed a uh, shadow toss. Now we're gonna put a pad on our hand, same sort of focused. Um, uh, now we're going to be dropping a ball to ourselves, and then doing a drop and hit third shot drop essentially, okay? Um, keep in mind that when you're dropping to yourself, balls in your fingertips, dropping in front of you, uh, main focus of this drill is to be stationary and to be controlled and just focus on understanding what the arm does, okay? So both uh, Janie and I are going to be dropping Dropping and uh, doing a drop and hit drop to ourself. Okay, so dropping and then hitting a third ball drop. Dropping, okay. Um, and in this exercise, uh, since we don't have any pace coming at us, we talked about with our dink, we're meeting the first imaginary ball. With our drop, now we're meeting the second imaginary ball. So now we're just adding a bit more extension in. Okay, finishing at that second imaginary ball, pausing at the point of contact. Very good, keeping that paddle nice and still. Leading with the palm on the forehand. Leading with the palm on the forehand there. Okay, so we'll, so we'll do about 10 on the forehand and then 10 on the backhand. Backhand side, same sort of idea here. Tossing with our left arm, making contact, and then pausing at that second imaginary ball. Again, toss. Contact and pause. Okay, ready here again. Toss, contact, and pause. Toss, contact, and pause. If you are unable to hit a drop in the shallow zone, you should ask yourself, am I doing too much on my finish? Am I extending too much? Um, 
because I feel like if you're able to find the shallow zone, usually you have a very short or quick finish after you've hit the drop. Hey picklers, if you enjoyed this instructional video, do me a favor, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn those notifications on. Okay guys, game here. Um, so we're gonna have a little battle and um, essentially here, the first person that makes five drops in a stationary position using a drop and hit um, is, is the winner. So let's go first, first, of, uh, first of five, and first of five meaning it has to be in the kitchen off of a drop, okay? Rock and roll, game to five, starting now, go. I've got one, I'm gonna count it out. Yeah. Uh. I've got, I've got one. Huh? <laughs> less, less. Okay. Again, again, again. Go, go ahead, go ahead. Yep. And then pause. Okay, beautiful. Think about just adding some more lift. Add some more lift, add some more lift. That a girl. Perfect, perfect. Good, good. Okay, we're going to say the score is 2 2. 2 2. 3 2. All right. Oh no. 3 4. Right, get out of here. Huh? 4. Oh no. She got me. She got me. She got me. Okay, so now I, I believe that she only hit four hands there. So now we're going to play the same game. First to make five drops in the kitchen, but it's going to be um, off the backhand side and off the bounce. Bring it, girl. Ready here and go. One. Add some lift. Add some lift. Find that right happy medium. Add some lift. Add some shape. Two. Three. Four. Oh, man, it's a, man, it's a good day. I'll tell you what, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and five. Very good. Okay, show me a couple on your backhand side. So drop. Okay, so just make sure that you're giving yourself enough space. So go ahead, yeah, we'll drop. Give yourself enough space. Beautiful. There, there, there. I uh, see how her arm was nice and straight. She was pausing at that second imaginary ball. So hang on. So um, instead of going through it, I want you to lift, go up, and then pause. Yep, yep. Go ahead. Up. And pause, lovely. Again, 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 same thing here. Lift and pause, 